Hey everybody, Anthony here. It is Friday, March 29th, 2024. Today's study is entitled, The Timeline of Jesus' Death and Resurrection. What I'm going to attempt to do today, and I'm going to go through it fairly quickly, but I'm going to post links and uh, to the scripture that I'm going to mention, uh, to some other videos, some other resources that you can look at and go see for yourself. So if the video is going too quick for you, you could slow it down, stop it, and start it again. But I want to get through it because there's a lot of information I want to cover uh, in this study. And it's taken from my notes, from my journal, from 7-29-22 to 12-3-22. And it's from the notes herein um, during that time period. I just haven't made a video on it yet. And so, um, as we have seen in previous studies, Messiah's death and resurrection prove that the day, the day begins at sunrise. Uh, I'm going to show you through scripture here, and I know it's, it's, it's going to be a lot of um, navigation for some people to do that think that they follow a lunar calendar, because most follow the lunar calendar that observe the Sabbath and uh, the feasts. Um, however, uh, Scripture shows that that is contrary to what Scripture shows. And during the time of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, there were actually two timelines being followed. The correct one being followed by, as you're going to see in this video, the Marys, Mary, uh, that are mentioned in the Scripture that went to the tomb, um, which was the biblical timeline. And you're going to see the Pharisee, the Pharisee timeline of Sabbath, which says that the day ends at sunset. So, and a lot of that is what's followed today. That's the that's from the Babylonian lunar calendar versus the biblical solar calendar. And this certainly is not the only video I could do on this proving it. There's much more scripture and other resources that I could show. But for today, let's look at this. And then we're also going to show today that Good Friday Easter is a false teaching, uh, showing that. It's impossible for Messiah to get three days and three nights at a Good Friday and Easter. And second of all, Easter is another Babylonian um, tradition, false pagan teaching. And so I know it's going to upset a lot of people. A lot of people get offended. That's fine. I was in that camp at one time. And it, t it takes, um, it's not easy coming out of Babylon. Let's put it that way. Uh, you cannot do it alone. You need Messiah every step of the way, and I could attest to that 100%. And so um, a lot of these notes are taken from the book Rest the Case for Sabbath by Timothy Schwab. Uh, I reference it a lot. I'll put a link to it. You could download the book for free on their site. You don't even have to buy it if you want to do it electronically. But it is available on Amazon if you want to print it. And I'll put links to everything again in the description. The entire narrative of Messiah's birth and his death and resurrection have been in conflict. Uh, this conflict may be possible only because so-called scholars, they say, are stuck in the wrong paradigm. We have What we have today are so many scholars that are stuck in the pharisaical way of thinking and the Babylonian teachings, they haven't shed that. And they're not willing to shed it, and it's infested into seminaries as well. Uh, Matthew is explicit. Messiah rose just before sunrise on the Sabbath. And we're going to see in Scripture today, it's exactly what happened. Uh, when the sun rises, it is no longer the seventh day. The Sabbath is always the seventh day. But when the sun rises, it's the next day. Sabbath, it's uh, the first day of the week when the sun rises, or what we call Sunday on our calendar. The Greek word interpreted dawn, D-A-W-N, dawn, is accurate here, as is the clear definition Messiah rose on the Sabbath, but before dawn and at dawn. Sabbath ends and Sunday begins. So he rose at dawn before sunrise. So it was still the Sabbath. It was still the seventh day. And we're going to see that. Matthew 28, 1. Remember, Sunrise is the measure, not the lunar. Sunrise is the measure. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn, Matthew 28, 1, toward the first day of the week, 
came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. Matthew 28, 1. The Strong's definition for dawn is Strong's G 2020. It's pronounced, um, of course, I always get the pronouncement wrong, but I'll do the best I can. Epifosco. Epifosco. It means begin to dawn or to begin to grow light. In the Gospel of Mark, Mark's account is written a little differently, but it clearly says the same thing. The confusion is understanding Messiah rose just before sunrise. That's where people get confused. And I was at first as well. In Mark's account, the woman needed to purchase spices, waiting until the Sabbath was over to go to the tomb where they would anoint his body. Now it is the first day of the week because the sun rose and they purchased without violating their Sabbath. They were keeping their Sabbath. There were two different Sabbaths going on uh, or, or time periods that they were keeping the Sabbath. Early in the morning, the first day at the rising of the sun, Mark 16, 1 through 2. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. Verse 16, 2. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. <clears throat> That's from Mark. In the Gospel of John, John agrees as the first comes, or in other words, has not yet come. This means it is still the seventh day Sabbath. Messiah rose in the dark hours early, right before sunrise. John and Matthew agree. This is John chapter 20, verse 1. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulcher, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. The day clock is not at sundown, as John further entrenches this day clock when he tells us that the evening, the same day, in which Mary had gone to tell Peter and Messiah that he had risen. So it's evening, the same day. John tells us this, that the lunar calendar is further disproven. And we can see that in John 20, verse 19. Then the same day at evening, so it's the first day of the week, which would be Sunday, at evening being the first day of the week when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Okay, so he appeared to them, he was already risen. He appeared to them on the first day of the week. He didn't rise on the first day of the week. Next, John says, after eight days, the disciples were in the same place. This cannot be used to claim the Sabbath changed. People will use that to claim the Sabbath changed, that time period. It is eight days after Messiah first appeared, which was the first day of the week in the evening. Not Sabbath. He is now reappearing, and it's a Monday. The disciples were not having service. They were hiding. And you can see that in John 20, verse 26. Go back and read through these verses in context, and you'll see, because I know I'm moving fast here. And John, uh, verse 26 says, And after eight days again his disciples were within, were within, and Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be unto you. Okay, that's when Jesus came right through, just appeared to them right through the doors. At Yahushua's death, at Jesus' death, if the Bible were set on a lunar calendar, Messiah's death is very problematic. And we're going to see that right now. He was crucified beginning the third hour. This is all taken from Scripture. We're going to go through it step at a time. According to Mark, that is about 9 a.m. The third hour is about 9 a.m. on the Bible calendar. But 9 a.m., but 9, excuse me, but 9 p.m. on the lunar calendar, the Pharisee lunar calendar and then the Bible calendar, both different time periods, which fails. He wasn't crucified at um, 9 p.m. at night. He was crucified at 9 a.m. in the morning, the third hour. At the sixth hour, which would be 12 p.m., the sun was darkened. That would be midnight on the lunar calendar. How could the sun be darkened at midnight? On the Bible calendar, that would be noon. 
He gave up his spirit at 3 p.m., which is the ninth hour, 3 p.m. This fits all the narratives as the Pharisees wanted him in the tomb before their lunar Sabbath uh, began at sundown. And that is a conflict, okay? That their calendar or their lunar calendar is in conflict with the Bible calendar. Matthew 27, 45 through 46 shows this. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried in a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Verse 46. In Mark chapter 15, 33 through 41, Mark says this. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying again, Lama, Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabachthani, which is being interpreted, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of them that stood by when they heard it said, Behold, he calleth Elias. And one ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar and put it on the reed, gave it to him to drink, saying, Let it alone. Let us see whether Elias will come. Elijah, they're saying, that's Elias, will come and take him down. And Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. And the veil of the temple was rent in twain, or in two, from the top and the bottom. And when the centurion stood over against him, and he cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. Verse 39, 1539. There was also a woman looking on afar off, among whom was Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Les, James the Less and of Joseph and Salome was there, who also, when he was in Galilee, followed him and ministered unto him, and many other women which came up with him unto Jerusalem. Mark fifteen forty one. In Luke twenty three, forty four through forty six, Luke says, and it was about the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he gave up the ghost. Luke 23, 46. Mark and Luke align perfectly with the solar calendar of the Bible. Go back and look at those verses. Um, and to recap, Matthew 28, 1, Mark 16, 1 through 2, and John 20, verse 1. Okay, a new day dawns at sunrise. Messiah rose before dawn, or sunrise, before dawn, still on the Sabbath day, which was the seventh day, which would be Saturday. This means the biblical day began at sunrise, not sundown. The dark hours of the morning were still Sabbath, Saturday, until the sun dawned. He rose on the Sabbath, which is only Saturday. At dawn, it was the first day. So in those early morning hours, still Sabbath, it's still dark. Tomorrow is Sabbath, okay, for me. I celebrate Sabbath from sunrise to sunrise. So very early in the morning, uh, Still Saturday, it's still Saturday, according to my Sabbath. According to what we follow, the day changes at midnight. That's not the way the Bible was, it was in this time. That's what you have to understand. Evening is still the same day. Only the Pharisee lunar calendar begins at sundown. Mary's did not. So they were followed, there was two different calendars being followed. There's a lot of confusion today with calendars and dates and things. And you'll see in other, in other videos that if you follow the lunar calendar, the moon comes in 10 days off. You can't, you got to do backflips and all kinds of finagling to get a lunar calendar to work. Okay, that's why there's so much fighting today about, you know, about this. People are following the wrong calendar and they refuse to follow and understand what the Bible simply instructs us to. Joseph of Arimathea was a Pharisee on the lunar calendar, okay? He was still following the Pharisee calendar, even though it says he was a follower of the way of, of Yeshua. He placed a body in the tomb before his Sabbath service, before his Sabbath observance. 
However, Mary would not anoint the body at the same hour on the Sabbath because she was already observing her Bible Sabbath instead since sunrise. <clears throat> That's where you see the, 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 the confusion. Luke 23, 54 to 56. And that day was the preparation, and the Sabbath drew on. Verse 55. And the woman also which came with him from Galilee followed after and beheld the sepulcher and how his body was laid. So they went to see where the body was being laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. They were following their Sabbath, their biblical Sabbath. Mark six, Mark, excuse me, Mark fifteen forty two to forty three, and now when even was come, even was come, because it was the preparation that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable counselor, which also waited for the kingdom of God, so saying he was a follower, came and went in boldly unto Pilate, and craved the body of Jesus. Verse forty three. There were two Sabbaths being observed, the wrong and the correct. That's what we're seeing in Scripture being depicted here. Evening is still the same day, note number three here. Later that day, when the first day began and the seventh day ended at sunrise, the evening was still the first day, not a new day. It was, if this were a lunar calendar, the day would have changed at sundown which would have made it the second day, but it did not according to the Bible. John 20, verse 1, and John 20, verse 19. Let's read them. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulcher, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. In verse 19 of chapter 20, it says this, Then the same day, the same day, at evening, being the first day, it's still that day, the first day of the week, <clears throat> excuse me, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Good Friday, my friends, is not Bible. Okay, you cannot, you have to do backflips again to get three days and three nights from Good Friday to to Easter Sunday. <clears throat> we will now take a look at the timeline chart showing the sequence of Yeshua's death, uh, Yahushua's death, burial, and resurrection according to Scripture. He mirrors Isaac's sacrifice from Jubilees, chapter 17 and 18. You can go back to Jubilees and see that. Messiah mirrors that sacrifice. The Feast of Unleavened Bread one of the three most important feasts requiring pilgrimage. So there's three feasts in of the seven that required all males to make a pilgrimage to um, to Jerusalem. Three times in a year, verse, excuse me, Deuteronomy 16:16. 16, 16. Three times in a year shall all males thy appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, in the feast of unleavened bread. The Feast of Weeks, which would be uh, Pentecost or Shavuot, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Those three feasts are pilgrimage feasts, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Deuteronomy 16.16. 16. Uh, and so what we're going to see is the timeline now of the um, death and resurrection. Number one, the first Hebrew month, Abib, 14. 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Remember, we're on the solar calendar. So it's Tuesday, Passover evening. Messiah is captured after the Passover meal on Abib 14. Remember, they're in the upper room. And then that later that evening, Judas betrays them. Uh, they're in the garden, and he's captured. It's after they celebrated uh, the Passover meal. Messiah was not crucified on the 14th of Abib. The Pharisees refused to put him to death on the Passover because that would cause an uproar. And Mark 14, 1 through 2 tells us this. After two days was the feast of Passover and of unleavened bread. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. Uh, verse 2. 
But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. Okay? So Wednesday, now it's Wednesday, Abib 15, unleavened bread, which is a feast Sabbath, 9 a.m., which is the third hour, Mark 15, 25, and it was the third hour, and they crucified him. This is Mark concurring that the third hour in the morning is when they crucified him on Abib 15. 3 p.m., he dies, Luke 23, 44 to 46, okay? It was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour, <clears throat> And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple rent in the mist. Verse 45. And when Jesus had cried in a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he gave up the ghost. Luke 23, 46. The ninth hour, 6 p.m., the tomb, Joseph of Arimathea on the Pharisee Sabbath gets Yahushua's body. Okay? And he gets him in the tomb before he celebrates his Sabbath, which is the Pharisee Sabbath. Mark 15, 33. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. Mary was already keeping her Bible Sabbath before dark. The Pharisees were following the Babylonian lunar calendar. They were not following the Bible. Abib 16. The first day in the grave, Thursday. Unleavened bread still. Mary waited for Sabbath to end. And then at 6 a.m. anointed with spices. And the counting begins. First day, first night. Abib 17, the second day in the tomb, which would be Friday. Still unleavened bread. Second day and second night in the tomb. Abib 18, the third day in the tomb. Saturday, which would be the weekly Sabbath now, see, during that week where he's crucified and in the grave, there's a feast Sabbath where unleavened bread, you go to uh, make the pilgrimage, and then there's a weekly Sabbath. So there's two Sabbaths we're talking about here. Okay? The weekly Sabbath now is the third day and night he's in the tomb, which would be Saturday. He rose just before sunrise at the end of the Sabbath. So, meaning just before dawn, like we discussed, he the tomb was empty. So when the Marys got there, after, on the first day of the week, the tomb was empty already. Okay? It, it was Sunday, but the tomb was empty because Jesus had risen before sunrise. That gives us three days and three nights showing that Easter Sunday is not Bible. And that's just a quick version. You have to go back and look at the scripture and study. Habib 19, Sunday, the tomb is empty. The tomb was empty. It's still unleavened bread. He rose before Sunday began, before sunrise. The evening is still the first day. Yeshua, Yahusha, is Lord of the Sabbath. Mark 2, 28. Matthew 12, 8, and Luke 6, 5. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Messiah is attached to the Sabbath calendar. No one can change it. Forgetting the Sabbath is forgetting his sacrifice and resurrection. The Sabbath day cannot pass away. It wasn't changed to Sunday. As much as that upsets a lot of people, it wasn't changed to Sunday. That's an error and it's the wrong teaching. He has restored it forever, and the Bible is set on a solar calendar, not a lunar one. Messiah ate the Passover meal with his disciples, as we said, Mark 14, 12, in the evening. In Mark 14, 17 to 18, and in the evening he cometh with the twelve, and as they sat and did eat, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, one of you which eateth with me, shall betray me. Verse 18. It was the next day on the 15th in the morning in which Messiah was taken to Pilate. Mark 15, 1. 
And straightway in the morning the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. Mark 15, 1. <clears throat> if you look at, and I'm not going to read this whole parable, if you look at the parable of the laborers, Matthew chapter 20, verse 1 through 12, you'll see that Messiah's parable mirrors the same timeline that we're talking about where um, the workers came into the field early in the day, in the morning. They were all paid the same wage, even the ones hired at 5 p.m., which was the 11th hour, and they still received the penny wage. And you'll see in this parable, if you read it, all 12 verses, you'll see how it lines up perfectly with what we just talked about. It's very uh, eye-opening when you do that, um, when you read that, and you'll see it. The day begins early in the morning. If Messiah was using the uh, Pharisee or the Jewish clock, if you will, men were not waiting in the market to work at 9 p.m. at night. The sun is not out at midnight. This goes back, if you look at this parable. So in review, before we close, Joseph of Arimathea puts his body in the tomb before sundown, also following the Pharisee calendar, not the Bible one. Mary observed where the tomb was and would not anoint the body until her Sabbath was over at sunrise. Number two, this is also evident in the resurrection account as Mary would wait until sunrise to purchase spices because that is when the Sabbath is over. She wasn't allowed, you're not allowed to buy or sell. They were following the same cycle as when they anointed the body the first day. That is why the counting of the three days begins at sunrise, and he rose just before sunrise on the weekly Sabbath, equating to exactly three days and three nights, just like Messiah prophesied. And he can't be wrong. If he's creator and sustainer of the universe, he cannot prophesy three days and three nights like it says in Matthew 12, 40. He says, for as Jonas was in was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And Jonah chapter 1, verse 17, now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. If you go Good Friday to Easter Sunday, Messiah is wrong in his prophecy because it's not three days and three nights. This fits with the timeline we just read from the Gospels. So in conclusion, I pray that this study clears up many misunderstandings. It may, it may cause people to, you know, get in an uproar or whatever you want to do, but that's one of the effects of ridding yourself of the baggage of Babylon and coming out of her, my people, and following Messiah in, in truth and following him in truth. Don't be upset. Understand what scripture is teaching us. It's an incorrect teaching and will help people in their walk with Messiah. After all, John 15, 5, if you, he's the vine, we are the branches. The branches don't take over the vine and write a whole new rewrite scripture. The branches are part of the vine and need to abide in him. When you don't abide in him, in John 5, chapter 15, it's a very serious consequence. And you know, the consequence is in John 15. It's in Matthew chapter 13, where the wheat and the tares grow together. The tares are bundled up and burned in the fire. That's not a good thing. The branches that are cut off um, are burned in the fire if you're not abiding in Messiah. So take some time and go back and look at these scriptures. And you can see the timeline is very simple. I'll include videos and, and again, the, the, the uh, information here. And um, that's my video today. I hope this clears up a lot of things. Um, if you want the written version, let me know. Send me your email. I'll email it to you.
And you could uh, go off my notes as well, which show all the scripture. Thanks for watching. Stay ready. Blessings in Messiah. Anthony signing off.